Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary from another Fan TV, man. Back at you, another video. If the content of this video, smash that like button. If the content of this channel, go over and subscribe, man. Look. All right, so we're going to go over the injuries. We're going to go over defense, and we're going to talk about the uh, the Ravens releasing their first step chart um, in today's video, all right? Offense didn't do too much to them. I'll be very honest with you. So I, the defense frustrated the offense all day long, all right? Now, injury. All right, veteran days, Morgan Moses, Ronnie Stanley. Um, then you got your normal guys that were out injured, Trenton Simpson, Arthur Marlette, um, Rocky Asin, Geno Stone, Pepe Williams, Gus Edwards left early. He's, uh, they, they didn't say what was that, what went wrong with Gus Edwards, but he left early. Uh, Makai Polk left early, limped off. Um, so guys that's going on published is just really J.K. Dobbins at this point. And then you got your NFI, which is Ty's Bowser. Because J.K. Dobbins has only got up on the NFI, I mean on the pub list, because Rashad Bateman actually practiced for the first time this offseason. So that's the big news on offense, really. Uh, not too much on the field, but that Rashad Bateman is back on the field. This is big news for the Ravens, right? Rashad Bateman is a guy that, I mean, in my eyes, is still the Ravens' best receiver. I know they have Odell here, and Odell's been great during training camp. Um, but I think Rashad Bateman can really be that wide receiver one type of dude. And the Ravens can have guys, can have two number ones, you know what I mean, going into this next season. Um, Rashad Bateman, I'm excited to see him back. He's a, truly a separator. Um, just a really, really good, young, talented wide receiver. The only thing he needs to do is stay on the field and put it all together. If he could do that, the Ravens have a really, really good receiving core on their hands. Um, I think they said this is the first time the entire receiving core has been out there uninjured together. So, you know, you got your Bateman, OBJ, Flowers, Aguilar, um, you know, and everybody else as well. All right. So that's that's great news. Um, Shaw Bateman coming back before the first piece of the game. Um, I wasn't sure that was going to happen. You know, I wasn't sure if we would see Rashad Bateman um, practicing until, you know, a couple weeks down the road. So now he has the whole preseason because I don't think he's going to play in preseason at all. I'll, if the Ravens play him in preseason, I'd be shocked. Um, and honestly, I'll be against it. But I don't see him playing the preseason at all. And so he'll have his entire preseason to ramp up and then get out there week one, man, versus the Texans. So uh, this is a nice long period for Rashad Bateman to really ramp up, get in football shape with the pads on and the head and anything like that. I don't know how much he did on the field today. Probably, I would assume not too much. Probably just went through drills and things like that. Um, but still, man, it's great to see him on the field. He was welcoming by his teammates. Uh, I think he, he came on the field. Keith Williams gave him a hug. So it's good vibes. You know, with Shaw Bateman's favorite words, good vibe. Bateman is back out there on the field, and I'm excited to see what he does from this point forward. All right. Now, as I said, that was pretty much an offensive highlight. Rashad Bateman came back. Um, today was about defense, really. Honestly, it was. Uh, Patrick Queen, Rokon Smith, Kyle Hamilton are listed as the standout performers today. Uh, Jaquan Amos, a guy that we I've had on the previous and watch list, intercepted Lamar Jackson today and leveled on Levens. Um, they said the throw might have been a little errant, and then I show exactly who Lamar Jackson was targeting. It's probably a miscommunication that happens. They're still practicing, but I'm gonna more focus on Jaquan Amos, right? This is the second interception that he's had, as far as I, as far as I know, he could have more, but this is the second interception that somebody's reported on about. This is how you make your name as an undrafted safety, all right? So when it comes Saturday, when it comes to that preseason game, I'm looking out for Jaquan Amos, right? Is he going to make plays in that game? It doesn't have to be interceptions. You know what I mean? Interceptions aren't something that you just get every game. You know, it's hard to do. Uh, but is he around the football? Is he making plays, tackles? So I'm going to be looking out for Jaquan Amos because he keeps making plays in practice, all right? Um, now, we talk about Roquan and Patrick Queen. Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen were very, very physical today with the Ravens offense. Apparently, today was supposed to be a uh, no-tackling kind of day. They did not get the message. They apparently tackled multiple players. Uh, they tackled Vokalek. They... Keaton, uh, Keaton Mitchell, multiple guys were down on the ground by the hand of uh, Roquan and Patrick Queen. And, um, yeah, so listen, if they're doing it smartly, I don't have an issue with it. You're a defense. You're supposed to kind of have that bully mentality and, you know, be physical with the offense. But we don't want anybody getting hurt in, in, uh, in training camp because of it. But it seems as though they they, they, they was throwing their weight around, right? And, they, <laughs> and, um, and because of it, um, Patrick Queen and... Uh, Melvin Gordon exchanged some words. I, I don't know if they were close to a fight, but they exchanged some words, and Lamar Jackson and other Ravens had to step in between the two and separate them, right? I love to hear this, personally. That's, just, that's, that's me. I love to hear the defense is getting underneath the offensive skin. 
Um, the offense has had a really good week so far this week, right? These first two days have been dominated by the offense, right? And we are not reported on that, right? Yesterday, it was not too much say about the defense. It was an offensive day. Today, it's a defensive day. So, listen, man, when you have a, a hopefully an elite unit on both sides of the ball, you want to see days where it's like this, right? One day, they, the offense can't get nothing to go on. One day, the defense can't stop the offense, right? And the Ravens are in that mode right now. So, I I, I enjoy that update. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm, I'm glad that the defense put it back on him, right? Um, Roger Washington, after getting paid, he's out there practicing. He had a, he had a run stuff. Um, Marcus Williams, or they are Darius Washington. I don't know how you can they can't tell it to, they can't separate the two, but they said one of them had a pass break for Mark Andrews. Um, then they did say that OBJ went deep on Jalen Armour Davis, forced a defensive pass interference. But Jalen Armour Davis recovered with a with a fourth and goal from the two pass breakup on Odell. Then they tried to do like a fade route or something, and JAD broke it up. So he bounced back from there, all right. Uh, but yeah, so the story of today was that Ravens defense being extremely physical with the offense, uh, making them uncomfortable, and um, Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith, Kyle Hamilton all standing out, and that's great because these are these are three of the guys that's going to be the leaders on their defense. We know Patrick Queen and Roquan, and um, a lot of Ravens fans' eyes, my eyes, is the best linebacker duo in the NFL, and Kyle Hamilton to me is an ascendant star in this league. Right, he had a really good year last year. We know that. Um, but to me, he's only going to get better from this point on. He's propelling himself to new heights. Um, yesterday, Mark Andrews got the uh, got the best of Kyle Hamilton. Today, Kyle Hamilton comes back and has a really good day. That's what you want to see. You live and you learn each day as you go forward. So the Ravens' defense was on point today, and that's that's that that's really good. That's really good. All right. All right. Now, as far as the depth chart goes. Just going to talk about a couple things that I find interesting. Uh, at running back, Gus Edwards is listed as RB1. Uh, now, Gus Edwards did leave practice today. That's unfortunate. Uh, so, hopefully, he's not, you know, banked up too bad. J.K. Dobbins is obviously RB2 right now. Uh, I believe that will change. I don't blame them for J.K. Dobbins as RB2. He hasn't practiced. So, Gus Edwards knows more, better, you know, good player, this and that, da, da, da. Uh, I believe when J.K. Dobbins comes back and does practice at some point in the next couple of weeks, he'll have his spot at RB1. You know, right now, he doesn't He doesn't have that. Cool. All right. Wide well, receiver, right? Bateman is, uh, so Odell Beckham is wide well, receiver one. Then you got Bateman, Flowers, uh, Nelson Aguilar, Devin DuVernay. So that's your five right there. And then wide well, receiver six right now in the lead is Laquan Treadwell. Laquan Treadwell has started to gain momentum throughout the training camp process. When we first started, he started off a little slow, all right? But in the coming days, he's been really good. I think he had that one-handed touchdown catch. Um, from, I think it might have been from Lamar Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. He's been making other plays as well. So Laquan Treadwell is really picking up the pace. And right now, he has his hands on that wide receiver six spot, which is, in my opinion, really the only spot at the Ravens wide receiver that's up for grabs on the 53, all right? Left guard, John Simpson right now is in the lead. Who's behind him? Sala, the, the rookie. They have Ben Cleveland listed as the backup right guard, all right? Um, which is not surprising because I believe that's what he, I believe he was the, technically the backup right guard last season. Um, you know, when ben, when ben Powers won the left guard spot. So, John Simpson right now is holding down that, that starting job. The Ravens still do like Sala, but right now they're giving the job to John Simpson right now. Okay? All right. Defensively, what stands out? Let's see here. Um, Michael Pierce listed as the starter over Travis Jones. I'm not necessarily surprised by that. Michael Pierce has been paid. He's the veteran. Travis Jones is still going to play a lot. Uh, Adafi Owe is listed as the starter over David Ojabo. That to me, that, that, that doesn't really count. because Just because Ojabo and Odafe technically play the same position as rush defensive end, there will be plenty of times when Ojabo and Owe are on the field at the exact same time. Right, so uh, Owe being tested, technically listed as the starter to me doesn't really uh, mean that much in terms of you know the competition between the two. They'll both be on the field at the same time. They'll rotate in and out. Um, Tyus Bowser listed as the starting Sam linebacker with Jeremiah Moon as that backup, and uh, Rocky seeing the seat is is cornerback two. And it looks like Jalen Armour Davis is probably right now cornerback three just because Pat Pay is hurt. All right. Um, 
Yeah, and that's pretty much everything that stands out. I'll put a screenshot of what the uh, the depth chart looks like, you know, just from the Ravens website and things like that. And uh, yeah, man, so listen, that's that's what stands out to me on the Ravens depth chart. And also, you know, we talked about the Ravens defense today in training camp, dominating the action. If you stay to this point in the video, man, consider hitting that subscribe button or more Ravens content to come at you. But uh, I'm gonna get out of here, man. It's Gabriel, to the Fan TV. I'm out.